Good evening, and welcome to Right on the Money. Uh, we always do this the uh, last Monday of the month. We want to help you be right on the money with the Lord, because uh, we do things God's ways. It, it, you know, amazing things happen, and because God doesn't want money to dominate you, He wants you to dominate it. And a uh, lot, lot of things in the news recently about debt. Uh, and uh, one, one of the big things is is President Biden is trying to go uh, uh, around, do an end round run, un run around Congress and pay off people's student debts. And a lot of people are saying, come help us, please pay off our debts. Please do this for us. Uh, the problem with that is, is you know, what is debt? Debt is something that you intentionally got involved in. Now, for example, um, you know, if you went to college and you took out a loan for college, and in order to go to the college you wanted to go to, you needed to borrow money. Why should you not pay that back? People go, it's all right. We need help. We need to do all that. But you entered into a contract knowing that. People go, well, well, you know, it's 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 just I'm burdened with these student loans. Uh, one of my family members, when when the debt thing didn't go through, he posted on, well, thanks so much for Congress for for taking away my ability to put money into the economy because now I got to pay off my student loans. And I'm like, but you entered into that. You assigned the contract. You did that. What's God say about contracts? You know, be careful entering into one. You know, you, you, you make a promise. You need to put it back. It says in Exodus 22, 14, it says this. And if a man borrows anything from his neighbor and it becomes injured or dies or the owner of it not being with it, he shall surely make it good. God is saying if you borrow something from your neighbor, neighbors, Bible defines as anybody you know, uh, you need to what? Pay that debt back. You made a promise. God says, don't break your promises. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 37, God says, it'd be better for you not to make any promises at all. But if you do, let your yes be yes and your no be no. So uh, so it, it got this going on. And here's the thing about the debt. You got to understand is uh, when the government pays it off, who's actually paying for that? I'll tell you who's paying for that. You, you, me, Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Taxpayer, um, because the government's paying that off and it was adding to the national debt on top of all that. Now, the crazy thing is, is well, I'm not going to go into that. You want to ask me about the national debt? I have views on that, that there really, there really is none because if the government wanted to pay it off tomorrow, it could. It just has to print the money uh, or just say, I'm not going to pay it. You know, uh, and, and by the way, our national debt, you know, somewhere around what, about $18 trillion worldwide. You know what the worldwide debt is? 300, over 300 trillion dollars. I think it was 313, 313 trillion, the last number I saw worldwide. You know what that means? Everybody's borrowing money, no one's paying it back. And you wonder why things cost so much, why things are happening. Because people are taking money and not feeling the obligation to pay it back. God says, as a Christian, you need to do that. The average American, just so you know, is $103,358 in debt. Now the now now uh, the sh a little shocking here it went through state by state. Now I would have thought I'll be honest I would have thought California would have the most debt, uh, but it's not. On average, the state that has the average debt for every for every person is Washington State, not Washington D.C. Washington State, way up in the Northwest, where the average person who lives in Washington, the state of Washington, has a debt of one hundred eighty thousand four hundred sixty two dollars. What you got to imagine about that number is people that are debt free. The people that have little debt. So there's the people with a lot of debt in Washington State. And then the state that has the least amount of debt, hey, uh, where it's the most affordable, I guess you could call it that, West Virginia, where the average debt in West Virginia is $64,320. But here's the deal. You know, if you enter into a contract of anything, you need to pay it off. Because God, if you're a Christian, because God says so. Because you made a promise. God says what in Matthew chapter chapter 5? Let your yes be yes and your no be no. If you say you're going to do something, you need to come through with it. Now, here's the thing. Do a lot of Americans have a debt problem? Yeah, we do. Here's the deal. Let's, let's go back to the college example. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't finish that. I want to finish that. You know, but, but I need to go to that college. Question, did you? And if you need to go to that college, why not take a year off and work and earn the money for that? Or take a couple years off. You don't have to go to college right out of high school. If you want to go to that certain school that costs a bunch of money, go get a job. Live at home. Save every dime. 
And then you can go to the place you want because if you graduate with a couple hundred thousand dollars in debt, it's like a mortgage payment without having the mortgage. And you're saying when you graduate from college, you don't start making the big bucks right away. You start at the entry level. People it, it tell you, oh, you're going to go in this field. And, and people Google, this is what the average person in this field makes. The problem is when you first start, you ain't making that. Uh, and, and we got to think about that. We got to think about, you know, what, what are you putting yourself out there for? Think about the long game. Debt can crush people. Um, now there's debt out there. Now debt is something you intentionally go into. Medical debt. You know, I talk a lot about medical debt. No such thing. You did not intentionally enter into that. Uh, you, you, you had an emergency, you had to go there. That's why the law says as long as you pay something on that bill, they can never, ever send you to collections. If they do, they're breaking the law. Okay. And uh, you could actually win a lawsuit against against the, the, the collector and against the, the hospital or, or the doctor's office or that. They have to because medical debt is not something you, you didn't go to the hospital on purpose to break your leg or have a heart attack. It just happened. So medical debt is not debt. People got to realize that. But what is debt is credit card debt, mortgage debt, college loan debt, all kinds of going out and buying things. You know, and here's the thing. Do people get in debt? Now, say say, say you're out there and you say, I, I'm a Christian, but my previous, maybe before I became a Christian, I, I made some horrible financial decisions. Or maybe you're a Christian out there watching this and you say, I've made some bad financial decisions. Because here's the deal. If you're in debt where you can't, where you're, you're, your eyeballs are, where you're swimming and drowning in debt, that means you've made some bad choices. But here's the thing. Bad choices doesn't make you a bad person. Doesn't eliminate you from the grace of God. God still wants to help you. We all make bad choices. When we sin, it's a bad choice. But God says, I will forgive you. So making a mistake with money is not, it's not doesn't make you a horrible person. Doesn't make you less loved by God. It shouldn't make you less in anybody else's eyes as a Christian. What will make it less, though, is if you take it and you say, well, I'm just, I'm just going to ignore it. Can't do that. Got to make an effort. And uh, and here's the thing. Yeah, sometimes there might be a consequence for taking out too much debt and going at that. But if you try your best to do what you can, God promises to help you. God says, when you turn to me, and you turn from your mistakes, I will be there to heal you. That doesn't mean God might come in and wipe the whole thing out. Sometimes he might do that, but he's going to help you. He's not going to let you drown. Remember, the righteous are never forsaken. What is the righteous? Not a perfect person, but a person who's deciding to do the right thing. If you're drowning in debt, start by making a plan. How do you do that? You go out and you get wise counsel. Here's the thing. If you're drowning in debt and your best friend's drowning in debt or your parents are drowning in debt, that's not wise counsel because if they're drowning in debt just like you, they don't have any way. Out. They, they can't help you. Find someone who's been there and overcome it. Or someone who hasn't got in the first place was helped other people get out of that problem. And sometimes it might make you have to make hard choices. Like I'm not going. I'm going to sell that car I got and go buy a, a cheaper car. I'm I'm going to downsize that. I'm going to stop buying, say, name brand stuff. I'm going to I'm going to change my diet and how I eat for a time. Um, Dave Ramsey, one of the financial gurus out there, he says if you have to eat peanut butter sandwiches every day, every meal to get yourself out of debt. It's worth it because the peace of mind is so much better. You know, I, I it's it's a great example. I'm, I'm not, I, I I like a lot of his stuff. Some of the stuff I don't agree with. Uh, um, but here's the thing: if you get in debt, you got to be able to, you got to be able to get yourself out of it. So you got to make a plan. That that's you know you want to be right on the money. Here's the thing: first thing you got to sit down and say, God, God, I, I need your help. I need to make a plan because here's the wrong thing to do. Well, God, I'm in debt. Help me fix it. Without trying to make a plan, God's not going to help you. You got to make a plan. Find someone to help you. If you're watching this and you're drowning in debt, I would be happy to help you with it. Now, I'm going to be honest. The plan is going to hurt. Because why? You got into the mess. It's going to hurt. You got to come back. When you go into the mess so far, oh, there we go. If you go into the mess so far, then in order to God get you out of the mess, he has to pull you back through. And you're going to go back through the mess to get out of it. But you will get out of it if you trust God. And also a verse we did that I'm doing this week on, we're doing Proverbs this week. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. When we see that amount of debt, we think, well, this is how I got to do it. So what's some great ways to get out of debt and, 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 and work your way to get out of debt? Well, the first thing is, you know, you got to look at your finances and say, put a name on every dollar. You know, and, and consider that you got to survive. You cannot pour all the money into debt. You know, I don't care how bad it is because you got to eat. 
You got to have a place to live. All right. You got to be able to get to work. I know there's some things you, you, you got. You got to decide, OK, what what is my survival needs? And then you might have to because you got that. You might have to sacrifice what you have to, what you sacrifice is not your survival needs. Way back in the beginning, I told you there's three tiers, your survival needs. And then after that, you have your your, your basic needs, the things you need uh, not to survive, but to have the qu a quality of life. And then there's your wants. You know what? You got the debt because the wants drove that. OK, rarely does anybody get into debt because of survival or their basic needs. They get into debt usually over their wants. Example, the college thing. Well, I got this $150,000 in loans to go to college and they make it so easy. We'll, we'll give you loans and then, then you get out of college. Uh, you're going to have this job. You're going to pay a lot of money. But you realize when you start out, it doesn't pay the money that the person who's been in that job for 20 years gets paid. And you know what? You're going to have to work on figuring out how I'm going to get out of that, how I'm going to solve that problem. How are you going to do that? Um, one of the things I've always told my kids, hey, unless you have a full scholarship, hey, go to community college to begin with. Get all your general ed out of the way. You know what? And then if you have to go into debt, go into debt for your major because that's what you're going to be basing your salary on going forward. Uh, and uh, so there, there's a lot of strategies there. But but let's say you're, you're there, okay? You need to make a plan. You need to sit down. Go find someone who can help you. Put a name on every dollar and find out what's left over. And when you find out what's left over, you take all your bills, take all your debts, okay? Lay them on the table. I say, God, you know I owe this. God, I owe it to them. And because I, I, I trust you, I, I'm, I'm going to, I need to honor you and, and do what's right. And say, God, this is what I have left over. Now, remember, oh, by the way, just so you know, if you're going to honor God, you also got to give your tithes, your alms, your 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 missions, and your first fruits too. You got to give to God first, because if you're not right with God, why is God going to help you? Does God want to bless you? Does God want your house to go wonderful? Yes. So you got you got to even if you're drowning in debt, you still got to give to God. Because here's the thing: remember, money God money's not your source. God is, and when you give to God, even especially when you're in trouble, you know what happens? God says, "Yeah, they're really serious." Now, with that being said. You cannot give to God with the expectation, I give it to you now, God, so now you are obligated to get me out of trouble. That's not giving. That's paying God. <clears throat> and guess what? You can't pay God off. You got to say, God, I'm still, I'm going to honor you. <clears throat> I'm going to give this out of love with no expectation coming back. That's what a gift is, right? No expectation you help me get off. When you do that, though, God says, you know what? I don't, I don't want my righteous ever begging bread. I don't want them ever having to worry about things. And you come through. And then you put your bills in front of you. And, you know, and here's the first step of the plan. God, how should I approach this? And sit there and let God speak to you. Here's the thing. If you just keep talking and you never stop, God's not going to talk to you. Because if you're talking, you're not listening. You say, oh, it does, it, that doesn't work that way. Have you given it a try? I have a wonderful phrase. Don't knock it to you. What? Try it. And then you take your money that's left over that you've that that, that you have now saved up. Uh, there's a couple ways to do that. Uh, one is getting rid of your wants, saying, "Oh, I, I, I'm just not. We're just. We're." Do you tell the family, "Hey, we're we're going to stop eating out for a while, okay? Because we need to do this." And God will honor you. Maybe someone will bless you with a free meal. Maybe God will do things like that because He's honoring your right choices. Um, we're not gonna. We're we're gonna get rid of that. Uh, those subscriptions. Uh, we're, we're going to give up TV for a while. We're going to give up, uh, ha having the latest, greatest cell phone. Um, you know, we, we don't need to have all that. We don't, you know, there's choices you can make. There's things that you do not have to have in your life when you're in debt. But here's the great thing. When you start honoring God the right way and God, he said, he still wants you to have an abundant life, but he doesn't want you to have a life where, you, where you're not appreciating what you have. And when you start doing that, God can bring things to your life and start paying things off and helping you with things because you are what right on the money. And you take that extra money, you start saying, okay, God, what bill should I pay off? What's most people's inclination? Pay off the biggest bill first, right? The problem is if you're already in debt, you're, you're going to have a tough time paying off that biggest one first. And uh, so, so uh, and, and I'm going to be honest, this is, this is David Ramsey. This is one of the things he says. And a lot of other financial advisors say this as well. Start with the smallest thing. And there's reasons why you start with the smallest thing. Because here's the deal. When you pay off, try to pay off the biggest one and you can't pay it off. And you you know what happens? You, be get, you get more depressed. 
because it seems like you're never going to pay it off. What you do is you pay off the smallest one first. Like, oh, I did it. I got one thing off my plate. Now, yeah, some things might end up going to collection. Okay, just because you're in collections doesn't mean you're a bad person, too. I mean, God, you make mistakes. God forgives. Yeah, it can hurt your credit a lot, but you can restore that. There's ways to do that. There's companies out there who will help you fix your credit. Uh, once you start paying off debt, then you might want to put some money aside to help that so you can keep uh, your – because credit's important. Credit has nothing to do with debt, by the way. It's the ability to loan you money. Uh, credit score helps you get a better mortgage, helps you get a better car insurance, helps you get better uh, health insurance, helps you get all kinds of things. Uh, because and, and, and credit's really just a game. So I, if you want to know about that, uh, go on to the YouTube channel. I, I have tons of – Tons of videos about credit, how to prove your credit score, because it's a game. And how, how do you know it's a game? Just watch these commercials. You can boost your score by doing this. You know, if you can boost your score just by doing something simple, by clicking an app, <clears throat> it really has nothing to do with how you actually live your life. It, it, it is just a game. Um, created by some guys in order so people could determine whether you can, whether you can get yourself into debt. You know, it, it, that, that's what it comes down to uh uh but uh but back to the thing so so try to pay out the smallest thing first you know some things have to go by the wayside they go by the wayside it doesn't mean you're not trying to pay them yeah you, 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 you just gotta do that uh there's, there's a great story uh by a guy named pastor rutland he uh was hired to be the pastor at calvary assembly of god in orlando florida if you go to orlando florida it's off the uh, main highway uh, you can't miss it going into Orlando. It's a big, huge glass church. And the church decided to build it years and years before this guy got here when the church was running three, 4,000 people. The sanctuary seats 5,000 plus. Uh, it's amazing. The, the seats are all numbers when they have events. It, it's, it's, it's like a, going into an arena. Yeah, beautiful building. Church went through some down times and it went down to about 2,000 people. A lot of people. Problem is they had a $20 million mortgage on the place. That's a lot of money, and uh, and and it, and and not only have the mortgage, but the insurance on that place was unbelievable. Think about a five thousand seat, j j just the auditorium, and you got classrooms, the children's ministry, the youth ministry. Imagine there, it's Florida, so it's not heating bills; it's air conditioning bills. I mean, you're talking a five digit in the summer electric bill. Okay, it's just astronomical how much money has to be spent to keep that church going. And so they hired him, and uh, and the church is about to go under. They don't know what they're going to do. The first couple months he's there, the bank calls him in, the pastor, and sits him down and says, Hey, pastor. Uh, and all the bank guys were there, and the president of the bank was there, and he looks at the pastor and says, Hey, you're the new guy. Hey, you, you owe this money. You are delinquent. We're, we're, we we need to get the money back, and you're you're gonna you're, we're gonna have to foreclose on you. And they asked him, "What are you gonna do about it?" Pastor Lawton says, "I was intimidated." He goes, "You know what? Yeah, yeah." He said, "I prayed to the Lord in that moment, and the Lord gave me a great answer." So he turned. So he's he back to says, "You know what? I just got hired here. You know what? My name's not on any of that paperwork at all. Uh, I I don't owe you a dime." You know what I can do? I can go Sunday morning and tell the 2,000 people who are left that we're going to pack up shop and we're going to move down the road to a school and rent it for a couple hundred bucks a, couple hundred bucks a month. And we're going to have church there, save all our money, and then go buy a building in two, three years down the road for, and, and be debt free. And you can, you can have the mortgage because there's nobody. I, I, I'm not responsible for that debt. The bank president looked at Mr. Rutland. Oh, no, well, I, I, I didn't finish the story. So Mr. Rutland, he, he, Pastor Rutland, he'd go and says, but you know what? I, I'm a Christian. And I, 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 I believe that the church should pay this off. But if you're not going to work with us, this is a problem. Because here's the thing. You know, the person who should be fired right now is the person who gave that church that loan when they knew they, could, they couldn't afford it back then. And that's where the bank president steps up. He just looks around the room with all the people in the room. And he says, Hmm. Pastor knows how to talk business. Long story short, they worked out a, a payment arrangement and deferred things and all that. And the church then said, hey, you know what? We'll honor that agreement going forward. And they did. 
And every Sunday after church, after the offering was taken, they put all the bills. They would have the board come together. They put all the bills on the table. And they would pray about what bills they could afford to pay. And then when they were done doing that, you know what they did? The ones they couldn't afford to pay, they sent a letter to their creditors. And said, we can't pay you this month. We can't pay you this week. We can't. We just don't have the money. But we will pay you. And if you want to charge us interest, you can charge us interest. But you will get your money someday. Now, they got some letters back for some of those creditors that, who, who said, no, we want our money now. And they tried to, you know, send them to the debt collections and all that. Now, the thing about debt collectors, if you have watched this series at all, debt collectors buy, buy debts for 5 to 10 cents on the dollar. That means they, they, they buy, for every $100, they, they, they'll spend 5 to $10 to buy that debt. So when it goes to debt collector, the person who owed the bill, the one's going to get, say it's a $1,000 bill, they're only going to get 100 bucks from the debt collector at the most. <clears throat> so it, it behooves the, the person who owns the debt to maybe hang on for a little bit. And, and over time, God began to bless the church. They had some miracle offerings that came in. They have no idea how the money came in. And they began to pay off the debts because what? They didn't shirk their responsibilities. They were upfront and honest saying, hey, this is where the church is. The guy said, I'm the new pastor. I didn't make these debts, but I'm going to make good on them because that's what God wants us to do. It's just going to take us some time. And they also cut corners. They, they, they cut staff. They cut things. They did, they did ministry, but they did ministry that was... That, that, that was smart, meaning that made a difference in people's lives. Because you still got, you, if the church stops doing ministry, you're still going to keep losing people. You can't. <clears throat> if you're out there and you're a pastor watching this and you have a church and you're wondering about, don't ever stop paying, doing ministry. <clears throat> now, you do need to evaluate whether the ministry is a want ministry, meaning it makes us feel good, or ministry is actually making a difference in people's lives. You know, you do that, then God will bless you. Long story short, after, you know, I think five or six years or whatever, they were able to burn the mortgage. They were able to pay the mortgage off in full. And the church became debt-free. And all their bills were caught up. Why? Because they were honest. They followed Exodus 22, 14. And God moved. And all those people in that church got to see that. You know what? There are people in the church who were in debt. And they saw how they did it. And they did the same thing with their bills. You know what? God took care of them. And so when you have it, so set them out there, pay what you can. And the ones you can't, here's what you got to do. Be like what Sam Rutland did. Uh, Dr. Rutland did. Okay. I said Sam Rutland. I think I know a Sam Rutland. I don't think it's a guy's first name is Sam. I have to get the book out. Uh, but his last name is Rutland. And if you can't pay a certain bill, why don't you write to the, to the bill and say, you know what? This is where I am financially. I'm trying everything I can. I can't afford to pay you right now. But I'm a Christian and I need to pay you. And if you need to charge more interest, whatever, that's fine. But I will find a way at some point to get you your money. Some of those bill collectors will take that letter. You know what? They might send it to they might send it to a collection company. If that happens, by the way, you can negotiate the collection company. Because here's what you already know. They bought it for 5 to 10 cents on the dollar. They'll settle for 20%. 20%. Now, they won't tell you that right away. You got to really, I can teach you how to negotiate with them. But you might find some of your debts, they'll write you back. And they'll be impressed. you actually make a difference. Your Christian witness will come shining through. Because they won't see you as a deadbeat. You'll see you'll be open honest. And oh, and here's the other thing I want you to talk about writing that letter. Don't send an email. And don't type it. Hand write it. In our day and age, the handwritten letter has become... And equator. But if you get a handwritten letter, you know that person took the time to do it. Think about that. So if you need to get help from a, a debt and say, hey, I'm going to pay you back, but I, I and you want to show you're serious. Handwritten letter. Because no one does it nowadays. People generate emails like the back of their hands or media posts and all that. And there's not a whole lot of feeling. You can see feeling in how the words are written. Is it sloppy? Is it nice? Hey, take some time and write the best you can. I know some of us write terrible anyways. But think about it. Because you're trying to make an impression on them. 
You're not trying to, now here's the thing, you're not trying to squirm out of your debt. You're trying to honor God and say, God, this is where I'm at. And I'm being honest with the people I owe the money to. And what are you saying? I was wrong. I messed up. I should never have borrowed all this money. But I did and I owe you. But I, I can't. You can't get blood out of a stone, right? And God will honor you. And you'll be amazed to see how God comes through because you are letting your yes be yes and your no be no. And God will move in your financial situation. So if, if, if you, I'm telling you, if here's the thing. You got nothing to lose. Nothing. Worst case scenario, they write you a letter back saying you're a terrible person. Here's the deal. Doesn't matter. They're, they're, that's a big corporation trying to tell you that. Who cares what they think about you? Right? All, all it matters what God thinks. But you could make a witness, even though you're in debt, to somebody who gets that. What 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 if that letter goes? <clears throat> You know, you know it's not going to the corporate president right away. Somebody in the lower level is going to get that letter and they're going to read it. What if it never goes anywhere? But what if that person you get to, the chances are the person working at the at, at the at the company that, that you owe the money to, the lower level people, they're probably in debt too. <laughs> they're going to read that letter. They may make fun of it, but you know what? It could make an impression on somebody. Changes their life for Jesus. Boy, yeah, they owe that money. But they're saying they made a mistake. They want to pay it off, but they can't. Write. And they wrote the letter. They didn't type it. They wrote the letter. What a way to make a witness out of your debt. And then you know what? When you do that, God says, I honor what? The righteous. The righteous is not the perfect person. The righteous is the person who's trying to do the right thing. And see if, wow, God doesn't actually clear your debts. What if a company would write you back and say, you know, what? I'm impressed by that. We're going to take half your debt off or pay it all off. You know what? You might say, that'll never happen. How do you know? How do you know it will touch someone's life? I'll tell you right now, the personal touch touches people's lives. I, I know that for a fact, you know, and, and I practice that in my life, by the way. Now, I don't have a lot of... I don't. I only have one debt. That's my car, and I'm not behind on any way. Um, but every week, I write personal letters to people in the church. If I miss them, I send these postcards out. And I'll show one to you. Uh, they look like this, and on the back it's blank. And I write a personal message. Sometimes I miss you. Sometimes I'll thank them for doing something. Sometimes just a note of encouragement. But I always hand write it, and I also hand write their address. Something about, and, and I get lots of compliments on that. Uh, and and uh, why? Because people just don't take the time to do that. It's so very important to do things like that. And if you're in debt, lay the so let's recap. If you're in debt and you made mistakes, God still loves you. Doesn't make you a terrible person, just means you made bad choices. Guess what? Everybody makes bad choices. People who lie have made a bad choice to lie. Okay, right? That you just happen to make it with money. God still wants God doesn't want now remember. The debt doesn't have to ruin your life. You don't have to be stressed about it. So you need to then sit down and say, okay, I made some bad choices. Now I need to make some good ones. You don't want to sacrifice your survival things. You don't want to sacrifice your basic needs. You also, and part of your survival needs is paying God first. If you want God to help you, you need to trust it. Because when you pay God, it's not God doesn't need your money. He wants to know you trust him, that he's your source. And then look at your wants in life. Do you really need that? Maybe I don't need to go out five times a month. Maybe I don't need that cell phone bill. Maybe I can get a cheaper cell phone. Oh, but I got to have the latest and greatest iPhone. No, go, go get a new plan and get the free phone they give you. But it doesn't do all the great things, but it's free. You know, and get that, you know, those $25 a month plans they have on that. If you're paying a couple hundred dollars for a cell phone bill, okay, and you're, and you're drowning in debt, the right thing to do is get rid of the fancy cell phone and get the one because you just need to be in contact with your family work. I mean, that's what it, you don't need it for the games and all the other apps. You really don't. I don't need that certain subscription to that streaming service. I, I, I had this car that I overpaid for. Let's sell it right now. If you have a car 
and you have a payment on it, you probably your car is probably worth more than what you owe on it, unless you bought it like in the last year. Because the last year, car rates have plop, gone way. I mean, it's crazy. Uh, most people can make money on a car uh, right now. And then you take the money that's left over, the debt's paid off, and go buy a cheaper car until you can save money to buy the car you really want. Where then it's not, you're, that's not keeping you up at night because you don't know how you're going to pay afford that payment. And then put all your bills in front of you with the money that's left over and ask God where to send the money. And then stop talking and listen. He will tell you what to do. And start with the lowest number, the lowest bills. Because, you know, we start the lowest ones and you start paying them off. You get the satisfaction. I can do this. And it helps you. Then when you pay them off, you take the money from that one and add it to another bill. And you pay the next smallest one off and go forward. Help God to find out which is the best one for you to pay off. And then the ones you can't pay. You sit down and you write a personalized letter saying, I messed up. I took on a debt I couldn't afford. And God says, though, I got I gotta let my yes be yes and my no no. Quote Matthew chapter 5, 37 to 39. Quote, quote that. Or is it 35 to 37? Um, I'm, let me get that right, right off the top of my head. Uh, not top of my head. Matthew 5. Exactly. All right. Um, oh, Matthew 5, 33 through 37. Quote that. And say, I'm a Christian now, or I've always been a Christian. I mean, if you keep, I'm a terrible person. I've been a Christian my whole life and I got in this trouble. It's okay. You made a mistake. It's okay. God still loves you. And say, I owe this. I want to pay you. But here's my finance. And, and and be open honest. Here's my financial situation. This is, I got to survive. I got to do this. Because if I don't survive, I'm never going to have money to pay you off. If I can't get to work. And I can't have a house to live in. And I don't have food to eat. And I die. I can't pay you. All right. So be honest about that. And say, I can't pay you right now, but I will. And if you need to charge me interest, you need to charge me interest or whatever. But I'm going to get to you at one point. You never know what will happen by doing that. And don't send an email. Don't and don't even type write the letter, put it in, a, in an envelope and go. Take your hand, your pen, write nice and neat. Because people appreciate effort. They also appreciate when you own up to a mistake. And they appreciate the fact that you're not squirming out of it you're not even asking for them to do anything you're just saying i can't now this is why but i will you'll be amazed not only the response you'll get from companies but the response you'll get from the lord because you do things upright oh back to our proverbs we started this week god will give you favor with him and with men wow what an amazing thing well, hope you enjoyed tonight's class. Hope you got something out of it. Remember, as always, Jesus loves you. He really does. And I love you. You are absolutely awesome.